Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now, something that is very important at an amusement park is the depth of the ride lineup. Obviously, the big headlining coaster or two is also very important when determining how good a park is. But other than that elite group of coasters at the top, how good are the others? A great example of a ride lineup that has depth is Cedar Point. At the top, you have rides like Steel Vengeance, Maverick, Millennium Force, Magnum, and Topville Dragster. However, outside of those, you also have other quality coasters like Raptor, Gemini, Gatekeeper, Valraven, Wicked Twister, and more. Without those other rides, if Cedar Point just had those top five, that would still be a great park, but it just wouldn't be the same. So, in this video, I will be counting down, in my opinion, the five parks with the worst supporting cast. Coming in at number five is Carowinds. Now, don't get me wrong, I'd love to come here someday. I mean, they have Fury 325, which looks to be one of the best coasters in the world. But outside of Fury, Intimidator, and Afterburn, there isn't much. I mean, they have Copperhead Strike, which is why they're only at the number five on this list, and not much higher. Because if they didn't have that, then they'd probably be like number three or something. But besides that, there's a Boomerang, a Flying Dutchman, an Arrow Looper, an OK Woody, and a couple others. Again, the supporting cast isn't bad at all, it's just not as good as it could or should be. Number 4 is going to be Energylandia. This is a park in Poland, and it was established in 2014. Now, the government of Poland wanted to increase tourism to their country, so they are giving Energylandia lots of money, lots of money, to install some of the greatest rides in the world. Now in 2020, Energylandia already has 15 coasters with 3 planning to open this year. So they've been adding two or three roller coasters every year, which is very impressive. However, since those three have not opened up yet, I will not be counting them as part of their lineup. At the top, Energylandia has Hyperion, an enormous intimate hypercoaster, Zadra, a huge RMC hybrid, which many consider to be one of the best coasters in the world, and Formula, a Vacoma launch coaster with many fun inversions. Outside of that, they have a water coaster called Speed, a Vacoma SLC, ouch, as well as 10 other coasters. Yeah, yikes. Number three is SeaWorld Orlando. They have a B&M Hyper called Mako, a B&M Flyer called Manta, and a B&M Flores called Kraken. This may not seem like much, but these are considered to be the best of their kind, like the best Hyper, the best Flyer, and the best Floreless. Outside of that, they have a water coaster and a kidney coaster. So, not much. Now, 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 I know, Icebreaker, a Premier Rides launch coaster, will be opening for the 2020 season. But given SeaWorld's current, uh, financial situation, yeah, that, Icebreaker will not open until SeaWorld makes all of their payments. So, since that is not open, I will not count it. And it comes in at number three on my list. Number two is Fuji Q Highland in Japan. Fuji Q Highland is infamous for their incredible top four. We have Dodonpa, the world's fastest acceleration, 111.8 miles per hour in 1.6 seconds. Now that is impressive. That is like top fill drag straight to your point, but the time cut in half. Next, we have Ijinaika, one of the craziest things you'll ever experience. This is a 4D coaster, which means that your seat is flipping back and forth while you are navigating the course. Next, there's Takabisha, which up until last year, was the world's steepest roller coaster with a 121 degree drop. And lastly, there's Fujiyama, which is a Togo hyper coaster. Amazing. Outside of that, however, well, I mean, yeah. And number one on my list, the park with the worst supporting cast is Canada's Wonderland. I don't think that this was much of a surprise to anyone. Basically, they have Leviathan, a B&M Giga, Behemoth, a B&M Hyper, and Yukon Striker, a B&M Dive Coaster, which are all pretty good. Outside of that, however, you have some of the worst coasters on Earth. And with that, the video is over. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Follow Amazing Coasters on Instagram, and I'll see you all next time.